Okay, in the previous tutorial, we took a look at the combination of layers and collision groups to move these objects around. And I'm going to show you another reason for using them, because sometimes maybe you want to, you know, take a building and knock it down with a brick or something like this. So let's make a quick building here like this. Let me see. I think I need to, oh, where is that? Look like about like that. I think that's it. And I'll just do shift D X. I'll just make a very brief little building, nothing much. And then I'll grab these and copy those up like that. And then I'll just grab all these and make another copy. Got to have somewhat of a building so we can get the effect. Alright, and then that's All right, so there's my building that's in the scene like that. Okay, so now with it in there, let's run the animation. And there they go. It's sitting. It's not being affected by the wind. These are all on layer two that we've seen. Though we know they're in the same collision group, and we can verify that by when you click on it, you see it's there. Click on that, it's, it's there. If you want to move it to a new collision group, you just click that and then click another group, and it just immediately goes there. You don't have to you press M like you do with layers. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm in, uh, le let me see, where is this? I'll put my cursor back here in the scene. I'm going to get another wind object over here in a second. All right, so I'll make sure I'm in layer two. Sometimes it's easier if you start in layer two for starters. And I'm going to add a different wind object here. I'm going to rotate a little bit like that, give it a little extra force plenty of force and then I'm going to go back and get layer one that has my lights on it as well now when I run that now of course they're both blowing in the wind so there lies the problem with it being on the same layer the buildings blowing over before the object can knock into it because you could of course use keyframes like I showed you in a previous lesson where you just animate the keyframes and you run it into there but then sometimes you want to use a physics effect to do it in keyframes you're kind of setting it frame by frame in this case you're setting it by giving it a force you know if you're doing it on a frame by frame basis that works maybe if you have a path that you want it to follow but this can work for other effects so what we need to do is somehow move these to different layers so it's almost easier sometimes if you just start like this it's actually easier if you do it like this I'll just get rid of me too I'll press shift s cursor to selected and I'll get rid of that and then I'm going to just press layer 3 real quick and shift A and mesh and cube I'm going to tab mode and then I'm going to scale it down a little bit like that tab out of it T is a new active so he's active and I'm going to put that in the group here in a second so let me go get the layers again I was looking at I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to get rid of this here. Oh, wait, hang on. I'm going to move my cursor to that location. Cursor to selected. I'll get rid of this. And then I'm going to add it when I have... I want to make sure I'm on layer 3. And I want to guarantee it by being on layer 3 when I actually add it. So I'm going to add a force field wind here. Rx and rotate it in like that. Give it some extra strength. So now I know for sure these are on layer 3. And then I'll go back to layer two like this. But I need to make sure that this cube is in the same collision group. So that's in collision group one. And that's in collision group one. Yet these are on different layers. So the wind should only affect this cube. And the wind should not affect this. Like this. So let's go full screen. Let's just see if that actually works. Press Alt A. And now the building is not moving in the wind. But this cube is not moving either. Let's see why is that the case. It says it's, oh no, this wind is on layer 3. That cube is on layer 3. Uh, let's see. It doesn't have to be over there. Let's verify that. Did I add it active? Make sure he's active. All right, now let's try it. All day. No, okay, let's do this. Did I give it enough wind? What was the wind setting? 28, maybe it's not enough wind. 
Okay, so it's active. Okay, now I'll run it. There we go. So the wind's not blowing the building, but it is blowing the object. So you're going to need a pretty stiff wind. So I'll escape that. There's either a couple ways to do this. We can either crank up the wind really good, like this. All right. And then run it. And that almost does it. But then this is the same thing that applies, like I've mentioned before, in a lot of the other tutorials when you're dealing with these physics effects, mostly in the game effects, the mass. Mass is huge. If, if you, you know, forces mass times acceleration, right? So, you know, this, these are all of a mass of one, but if this is moving a lot slower against all these bound together like that, I can just crank up the mass. Of course, when you crank up the mass like this, then you're going to have to have even more wind to push against the mass, but let's see if that's enough anyway. No, nope. see, not enough, not, not enough wind to blow the mass along the ground. But these, that's what's really cool about this whole program. So we're going to just crank this wind way up. All right, so now it should be enough wind to blow it. I'm going to find out when it gets around. And it might be enough force. Oh, barely enough, man. Well, let's crank it way up. Oh, there we go. All right, so all these little features play into consideration. We're using collision groups, layers, the mass, the wind effects, the whole nine yards, but it's all these little details that really matter when you're setting up your simulation. And the best thing to do is to plan this stuff in advance. I mean, so when you're going to build a building and when you're building other objects, you know, plan on the mass in advance and the size of the objects and the wind forces and everything. A lot of design in advance can go a long way. Otherwise, you might get somewhere down the road and have a giant structure with all these masses that are incorrect. And, you know, you can't just easily go and, you know, just like a color, you can't go change all these colors all at once. You have to go pick them individually, unless you're programming and you could do it. So planning in advance makes a big difference. Okay, well, I hope that now makes sense. It should, and I'll see you in the next lesson.